previously on Workshop Wednesday. If you couldn't guess from the intro, this episode is mainly about assembling the final drive units. But before we get into that, Bo was making a few pieces for the brake housing from a few weeks ago. Next are the mounts. Basically the shoes run on a hard spring clip and we don't have any of those left because they're, they're either bent or um, corroded. We've got to make some. We've got an old one here that wasn't too bad but it's still not good enough to, to use. It's been worn through. So, this is where it would have gone on here. This piece bolted down. And then it's got a slotted hole in the back here, you can see. And the spring would have gone through that and held the brake chute down hard onto this. And then that tapered piece goes in between and runs on the rollers that would be on here. And that's what separates this and applies the brakes. So they didn't move that much, obviously, but they moved just enough to stay on this clip here. They're what keeps the brake shoe up in, in its position, yeah, stops them. Because if they weren't, weren't there, it'd be falling and sagging and whatever. So it needs these wear plates to sit on and run, run against. You could make them out of mold steel, but they wouldn't last. And we don't know how much pressure it's going to go on them. It's only a spring, but wearing over time, you know, if it's it, you're best to use a hard plate. So we're going to use wear plate or bezeloy. We've got the plate marked out. We're just going to cut the plate into the right sizes, and um, and then we can go press them into shape, and then we're going to drill holes on them. We nearly have everything we need to fully assemble the brake housing. We just need to work out how to get the correct springs and how to recondition the brake drum, but one job at a time. You gotta watch your fingers on this, eh? You might lose them. <laughs> Thank you. 
As Bo finishes the clips off, Ryan prepares the left-hand final drive unit for assembly. We've showed how these go together in a previous episode, but we couldn't finish it as we were still waiting on new input shafts to be manufactured. Now we finally have them, and the boys can start putting everything together properly. But something seemed a little bit odd about the bearings. Yeah, so this is a dual row barrel bearing, so it's like that to allow for a bit of movement, so that bearing will still uh, hold, load and roll if the input shaft's slightly off, which can happen in these things under a lot of torque and a lot of stresses, twisting and that sort of stuff. I've never seen one of these before, because most bearings like a, um, a ball bearing or a, like a tapered roller or, or something like that, you, you can't you can't yeah. get much movement out of them, yeah. It has to be perfect. Yes, do, yeah it does. Ball bearings can get a little bit, like a single row ball bearing you get a little bit, yeah. But this, this you can get a lot. Just, so this is our bearing spacer just from the shaft here. So it will go on like so. And the bearing will sit on that just so it's away from that gear. So next we'll press this bearing on. Down on there like that. And then we'll drop that whole shaft in. look like it's pressing on unevenly, but don't worry, the bearing outer has a lot of movement, just as Ryan explained earlier. Ready to go. Insertion ready. Ready to rumble. Alright, let's yeah. um, put a bit of stuff in the original there. Get the drift on here. I just don't want to let it drop. Yeah, just grab that. See it sort of pinned over a bit? Yeah. That's it. Oh, that's it. Now the bottom one, I'll just. Not too much, because. Because you're to get the inside. Yeah. 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 You've got to go down yeah. there. Yeah. See that? All that movement. It's in. Yeah, it feels good. Really good. Good feel. Wow. Yeah, go for it. Not really. They're pretty good. Like you. Housing. That's it. Yeah, second. Well, it's obviously not the shaft's not in there, but that's you get the idea. <laughs> That sounds yeah, good. It's like, it's like yeah, well, it's not, you know, we don't have the shaft in there yet, so. That retains it onto the gear. That slips through that, all that, it just sits in there, just bolts on. Hey. All, all this does is yeah. hold, holds this whole thing into the housing. This here? Yeah, well, it holds the bearing inner on, and it holds this shaft onto this. Yeah, right. But how, then, how are you meant to get that on? Leave, you put that, you slip it all on, oh, and then, then you, you do that up, and then this just slips over it. Really? Yeah. And the, because this here is slightly smaller than, oh, than, than the bearing. Oh, you got to put the race on after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. yeah okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that just slips over it. Yeah. 
lines up. It's a pretty good idea, eh? Right? Well, it's the only way you could really do it. Which are the other parts in that that cover plate? Yep. So yeah, retaining plate. For the bearing inner, it's got a little pin here which locks into a hole in the shaft. Pin locks in. Yeah, yeah, like so. Yep. Little tappy tappy. There we go. Yeah. So we've got the lock, lock washer, and that for this hole here is for that'll that'll drop into there, stop that turning, and when we tighten that nut up, we fold the um side over this tab over onto the onto the bolt and that will um that will stop it coming loose yeah let's put a bit of oil on that thread turning that you might have to hold that in there right right enough This is the same housing. And that was what we got made new. Well, that smashed off because because the um, the hull blew apart. And that, that side of the hull actually ripped off. And it pulled the gear off inside. Yeah, is that alright? Yeah. Oh, there's one here that's already half open too. These, these shims are what the, that bit with the spline sits on. Yep. So they sit against here. Yep. And that space is this. So that would have been for the brake drum. Space the brake drum. Three. Three. That one mil shim. That three mil. Yeah, a bit of shim action. Mm. A little bit of difference, eh? One's on there. This would have been what they used in the factory. You reckon? Three bonds, yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you joking? Yeah, I'm joking. Oh my god. Oh. 
bit more. Yep, hang on. I hope this one looks good here. Bow is tacking these bolts in so they don't spin if we ever need to undo these nuts from the outside. I think lock nuts are the go, but these are these will be just as good. You can just imagine rows upon rows of these finished final drive units in a factory. They're self-contained and fairly well protected once they're all assembled. Unfortunately, things don't look like they'll be as straightforward as we hoped. Even though Bo and Glenn did a great job of straightening the hull side, it's not exactly perfect. That means that the drive sprocket won't run true. For this vehicle to run properly, everything has to be perfectly aligned. In the Panzer factories, partially completed vehicles would have run along a huge milling machine that would have squared up the sides to prevent this sort of thing from happening. You can see that Bo has chalked out the high points that are going to have to be ground down. It's a problem with no easy solution, but we'll be showing how we fix everything up in a future episode. That's all we have time for today. Tune in next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. Until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and I'll see you on the next one.